So I think Mr. Clinton said <laughs> we want the best education in new life. But I think the whole education system is falling apart. And uh, uh, why? Because we, we, we don't have the best education because the whole education system is based on Darwin theory and Genesis theory and they don't drive. So when we, we have one best education, but these kids, they, they go to school and they don't know what to choose, whether they come from gingerbread or they come from monkeys. So we're not, <laughs> we're not <laughs> uh, educating our children. I think we're confusing our children. Mm. So. I've heard you say often, uh, grandfather, that children and businessmen alike carry their brains in their suitcase yeah, or in their the, backpack. Yeah, all the, I see <laughs> all the kids now, they have their brains in their uh, backpack. And a good thing when I was tugging in the bushes, <laughs> I didn't have no uh, backpack uh, to put my brains in. It's there, so uh, talking uh, direct, that's the best way. So I think the whole world was our school one time and our playground. So perhaps I'm the last one who came out of bushes. <laughs> so and then I came back in this, uh, this concrete jungle and uh, it's very confusing. It's, uh, there's a brown cloud hanging over our head and, and uh, everything is contaminated. The rivers, and lake and oceans and the air and everything we eat is contaminated. So uh, our mind is uh, not really clear and our physical body is not in good health. And uh, so that's why the society are hollering. We need more doctors and we meet, need more doctors and nurses and we need more pills and more knives. And so uh, people uh, um, Meet a lot of spare parts, so the society had to sit along that road and with a knife and fork and <laughs> somebody call like who wants a liver, who wants a head or pieces, you know? so uh, or who wants a lung or like a kidney or like that, you know? so well, everybody seems like needs spare part and look at. So I think we should put our head together and to gosh that the Creator come and reorganize and uh, to recreate our mind, body, and spirit. Now we behold again, see? And, and w the prophecy is, is that we have choice in the next generation yeah. to do this. And Connie Marlowe is one of the uh, individuals that is now living the way that, uh, that you've been describing. And also, uh, she, uh, the mother of three, she has one her youngest boy is uh, is making a choice to follow the path that oh. you're speaking of. Connie, Good. tell us a little bit about what you and Johnny have been doing. Well, I've spent a lot of time with grandfather here, oh. and yeah. I've listened very carefully, and I have come to the realization that what he's speaking of, that what he's carrying is clues to how to live in the future, in this world, in balance with the rest of creation. And when my son, uh, at the age of seven, decided to drop out of school, I had enough knowledge of a broader perspective that I could allow him to do that and turn him over to the unseen forces of the universe. Because I have come to understand that trust is the key to the magic, is the key to the being in harmony with 
the universal mind. And yeah. so, in my opinion, there's nowhere to run now in this culture. And I feel that if, we, if someone has the courage to live and perhaps model a new way of being, that that's our only alternative. Because there's no place to go. Now, at the age of seven, he would have been in the first grade? Right. He was in the first grade. And he dropped out of school in the first grade. Yes, because... Which is remarkable. Yeah, I, well, I had the understanding from, from spending time with grandfather and other Native people that each person brings a gift, a unique gift to the world. And that Johnny Marlowe knows what his gift is on some level. And he knows what his path is. And that each child knows their path. Our culture doesn't acknowledge that. They say, he's only seven, how could he possibly make a decision like that? Well, if Johnny Marlowe doesn't know who he is and what his path is, who does? I can only know who I am and what my path is mm -hmm. and guide him. But, um, so we are walking in total trust of a loving universe that will bring to him everything he needs in his life. And how, how does that relate to, the, to choice and freedom of choice as one walks through life? How is that going to change how he lives in a world around him that possibly is going to be slow to change or not change at all? Well, as I said, he will be given everything he needs to live in this world. So he, he will be given, if he's going to be a doctor, he will be taken on the path of a doctor. If he's going to be a medicine man, he'll be taken on the path of the medicine man. When, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Johnny does not resonate to the prevailing teaching methods in America today. And by, because I've spent so much time with the Native American people, and I understand how they direct their children's learning. They don't direct, they wait, and they watch, and they guide. And they let the child discover. Yeah. The Native American way is about discovery. You ask an, an elder a question, he won't answer your question directly. He'll tell you a story that allows you to ascertain and bring your gift to that story and bring your knowing and have it add to your knowing so you can take it the next step. And that's what, it's my opinion that, that um, the Native people have been holding clues for us and that it's up to us the white people as leaders of the world to take those clues and put them to work in our lives because those clues have to do with the true nature of the universe. Now you you came to this in the last decade. Yes. You came to these understandings in the last decade. Aside, l alongside with Johnny, how are you personally living your life with these understandings? Well I walk in total trust. I mean I listen to, to the clues that are given me, I call uh, circumstance, I consider to be an agent of the divine, of the, the universal mind, that will guide us. The, you know, the Indians, you hear the signs, we're waiting for the signs. Mm -hmm. Well, I live my life by the signs, mm -hmm. because the universe will tell you where to go and what to do. The universe loves you. My grandfather expresses that. He says, you know, the Creator is waiting for you to come back to him. He will dust you off, he will brush you off, mm -hmm. and he will hold you and love you. Mm -hmm. And this is the healing of the separation yes. between humanity and the Creator. Yes, this is walking through that, that doorway of trust. And it takes an enormous amount of courage because in our, in our society where, the, where the, the word risk is huge, are you taking a risk why are you taking this risk with Johnny's life? Well, once you walk in trust, there's no such word as risk. And there's no such word as what if. You cannot have a what if when you walk in total trust. Is there a difference between trust and faith? Um, I think so, because faith, to me, faith is something, is, it, there's, a, there's a space between you and your faith. And walking in total trust is your total knowing that you are loved and that there is an abundant loving universe that will care for you mm -hmm. and, and take you to beyond anything your conscious mind mm -hmm. could conceive of. 
We have a, a very, uh, I guess the word would be misinformed understanding of abundance in our culture because abundance to many people means lots of money and lots of things, lots of stuff. And Wallace was telling me yesterday that in the Lakota language there are no words for things and stuff. Mm -hmm. 